Oh no, they want Jeff Bezos to buy the Suns? Not before he buys this football team playing here in Washington. And by the way, Robert Sarver should have to give away the Suns as reparations. Hey, we take them all over in a group trust. Welcome to Open Mic. We like to start the show with a few stories or a hot take on a story you're not likely to see anywhere else. I'm from gorgeous Prince George's and now I spill the tea in DC so you know these jokes come from a place of love if that was something I was capable of. Let's start things off in DC where an Indiana man named Sean Ray Deaton was arrested for allegedly vandalizing the Washington Monument. According to Park Police, around 7.30 Tuesday night, officers found red latex paint dumped on one side of the National Monument and a profane message scribbled next to it. Have you been expletive by this with an arrow pointing up? Gov says, tough expletive. Bruh. If you're going to deface something this iconic, put some effort into it. This looks like first grader artwork. You know what? I take that back. What I said was insulting to first grade artists. At least their work has some artistic value. This, however, is chicken scratch. His lack of talent is probably why he chose the most recognizable canvas in the city. A real artist could have gotten the message across with a mural. This guy needed shock value to be seen. He's Psychelangelo. No, no. Fraud Monet. How about this? Vincent Van No. Uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat, the garbage version. What is ironic is we can't show the full message on the news, so Sean actually went to jail for nothing. Hopefully his cell block has an art program. He can mellow out like Bob Ross and paint happy trees to pass the time. Let's head over to Chicago for this next story, where after nearly eight weeks, the winners of the $1.3 billion, good love, that's a lot of money, that was the Mega Millions jackpot, which, by the way, was the third largest in lottery history, have claimed their prize. And I want to say congratulations. I'm hating. I mean, I'm happy for y'all, I guess. The winning ticket, by the way, was claimed by two individuals who agreed to split the prize if they won. Now, that's loyalty. The one who actually bought the ticket could have easily run off with it like new friendship, who this? This agreement to split the prize is probably why it took two months to claim it, because they had to cover every base to make sure neither party ends up on a true crime documentary over the money. The smartest thing they did, I will say, was choose to remain anonymous. Let friends and family find out once you've changed your phone number and have round the clock security. I do want to congratulate the anonymous winners, even though I'm not one of them. Now I chose this next story because it's invasive, but interesting. The National Transportation Safety Board is recommending that all new vehicles in the U.S. must have blood alcohol monitoring systems installed that can stop someone intoxicated from driving. But now a technology supported by big automakers promises to help create what developers call a world without drunk driving. Errol Barnett is testing it out. He's in a car with the high-tech tool in Virginia. Errol, good morning. Hey there, good morning. Let me show you these orange sensors around me are the driver's alcohol detection system for safety. And this screen, which we have up for demo purposes, has a green line showing you how much alcohol is being detected in my breath. It's at zero right now. Oh, uh, as long as they keep those off the scooters. Am I right? A zero, huh, Arrow? Well, I guess they knew who to send to the assignment. This could have gone badly for some folks, depending on what happened the night before. Now, if you were thinking about investing in rideshare stock, now is the time. Drunks got to get home somehow. And I am happy to see that this technology doesn't require blowing into a breathalyzer because you can sit in your prone vehicle and fail this test with some dignity. Let's head over to Sandy, Oregon for this last story where a couple named Kyle and Mary Lou Bryant have created a TikTok sensation called the Blockbuster... Bella Show, which is a series of videos featuring an 80s loving gerbil named Bella with a very detailed miniature set. This is Bella, a gerbil that has almost 14,000 followers on TikTok. Kyle Bryant and his wife Mary Lou are producers by day and creators by night. They thought, why not do something a little fun working with animals? We wanted to produce a show that's positive and uplifting because we feel like this world is very negative. Bella's story, she loves everything from the 80s. She has dial-up for her internet. She's got record players. She's got a Walkman and a boombox. 
Wow. Anybody else, anybody else feel personally attacked when he said this world is very negative? Look at that attention to detail. I had a blockbuster video flashback when I saw this. Rewind, make sure you rewind those videos before you send them back, Bella, because they will charge you. Now, Bella is played by two gerbils, by the way, so don't y'all go complaining to the uh, labor board. Ginger and Charlotte, they only work about five to ten minutes at a time, which I think is really cool. They are the Olsen twins of the animal kingdom. Kyle says it took 80 hours to build a blockbuster set, 40 hours to build Bella's home, and 15 hours for Mary Lou to write the story. I think this couple invested themselves in durable greatness, and who knew this is what the world really needed. Somebody should send this to Donald Trump's legal team, because I know they're pretty stressed out right now. Uh, my favorite story, you know it's got to be Bella, the 80s love and gerbil, sending a little bit of sunshine to Oregon. Uh, it is the only other show worth mentioning on this, the one-year anniversary of Open Mic.